Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. And uh, today we're doing a paddock move into a beautiful, beautiful piece of grass. This is one of those paddocks that was clipped 60 days ago. And uh, right next to it is a paddock that wasn't clipped. And it doesn't look bad. That one we got a really good graze on. We don't even hardly have any seed heads on that one. So that one really didn't need to be clipped. But boy, this one's just super, super tender. The cattle, we split it right down the middle. So we gave them half of a, I don't know, there's probably six acres, seven. There's seven acres on this ridge. And so they're going to get three and a half a day. And there's about 300 and... 20, I think around 320 head in here, counting everything. We've got a, a float on that tank <clears throat> that we need to tie a knot in the stream. I know it's just, just a tiny little seat coming over the corner of the tank. Of course, we won't be able to tell it now if the cow's drinking it, but it'll fill back up. So I'm gonna take my shirt off, <laughs> reach down in her bare arm and tie another knot, maybe two knots in that string, just to shorten up that float so we don't have a little, little seep coming out. You don't wanna be seeping water in the summertime out of your tank. And that's coming out of that pond up there. So it's not like we're having to pay for the water, but you just don't want a water seep around your tank. It could cause you uh, mud. And I don't like mud on the cattle. We're pretty fortunate on this farm. We've got pretty darn good shade on most of the paddocks. There's a couple here that don't. Um, and those we allow, we normally let them come back to shade if it's going to be really hot. And the last couple of days it's been up to 100, I think it's 100 and, 102 heat index yesterday. I know it was warm. I had a lot of, a lot of people, uh, you know, work until like 1 or 2 and not, just kind of, not doing so much from like one o'clock to four o'clock. It's just, it's kind of dangerous. Cows are all bawling for their calves. As soon as the calves come through around that corner, they'll, they'll hush up and they'll all go to grazing. But boy, the cows are in just really, really good condition. They're fat. The calves are putting on weight just a really good time of year to be a cow here on Green Pastures Farm. Part of that is we've really been blessed and uh, you know, prayers have been answered for rain. And it seems like every time we need a rain, we get a little bit. We got uh, half an inch yesterday and we went, I'm sorry guys, I know you all are in a drought and just telling it like it is. We went 10 days and it was you know, told the boys that we could use the rain, knock the dust down, and we got one. So, there's been years we haven't. And so that's just the way the, the grazing business is. Some years you get it, some years you don't. And this year, I guess you might say it's our turn, because we're getting it about when we need it. Golly, it's, it doesn't get any better than this if you're a if you're a cow guy or a grazing guy, I mean, um, I get tickled. Some of the comments I get, and I, you know, I love the comments. There's, there's a lot of them out there, and I got tickled. The guy this morning goes, ah, I said, and he was commenting on a video where I'd moved the cows onto a piece of grass. It looked a lot like this. And he goes, ah, I said, I feed my cows cake and, cake and hay. He said, grass is for the poor cattle. <laughs> uh, well, these cows look pretty poor to me. They're so darn fat they can hardly walk. 
Folks, the grass is the only unfair advantage we have. It's the only unfair advantage we have as livestock people with ruminant animals. And when you start feeding them cake and hay, you've taken that advantage away. Now you've made them dependent on you, and you better have a good job in town because you're supporting your cows. The cows aren't working for you anymore. I just, I got a good chuckle out of it. It's just like, man, I would hate to have to feed my cows cake and hay to keep them on my farm. First of all, there wouldn't be any money left, zero. You'd be in the hole at the end of the year because a ruminant animal, I mean, these big cows, they eat a lot. And uh, they can eat that grass that you and I will starve to death eating. And they can put weight on and grow a baby calf inside them and wean a calf at the same time on grass. So, folks, it's all about the grass. These are just uh, tools to convert the grass into a valuable protein that we can sell to our neighbors and friends to you know stay on the farm and make a living every year without having to purchase a lot of outside inputs which takes all the money out of your pocket so to me ruminant agriculture you know i, I get this I, and again, I get a lot of emails, and there was a concern fellow yesterday. Well, Greg, he said, you know, what you're doing is all good and fine, but, you know, you can't feed the world grass-fed beef and replace industrial commodity feedlot beef. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. What's all this corn and beans being grown to do? It's going through a cow. They're, feeding, they're raising all this grain to feed cattle. Well, what if we took all those acres that have grain on them? Not all of them, but a large majority of them. That's the best land in the United States. That's why it's being cropped. The junk land on most farms is up in the hills where they can't get a root plow in it or a disc, and that's where they got the cows running on, is the wasteland. What if we had them on land that was producing, i just throw it out there, 250, 300 bushel acre corn per acre, that type of land that had topsoil three foot deep, or two foot deep, or a foot deep, doesn't matter. You know, we're on the land here, it's got three inches of topsoil. It's deeper than that now because of our grazing practices, but what if all that land that we are now nuking with glyphosate and all these other horrendous chemicals that's ending up in our watershed, Gulf of Mexico dead zone is getting bigger every year, and all the soil, oh my gosh, all the soil is leaving our farms. Oh, that 17 inches of rain just ruined people around here, ruined their crops. Sorriest looking soybean fields I've ever seen. I mean, it just wiped them out. What if that had been covered in grass? What if? We would still have that soil where it needs to be instead of down in the creeks. So you start hearing people say, oh, you know, you got to stop eating beef and all this crap. That's bull. We've got to have animals out on the land, and if we had more of these on the better land, it's a lot more productive. Who knows? I mean, I don't know. It's probably not going to change in my lifetime, but I'm planting a seed out there. Hopefully the next generation will get woke up to what we're doing, growing food in lifeless soil, turning the soil, spraying it, nuking it, you know, washing away with rains, we need to keep our soil covered because any nation in history that's destroyed their topsoil has ceased to exist. Look at the health issues going on in our country. It's because we've taken the animals off the land, we've taken people off the land, and now everybody thinks that their food comes out of a store. They don't know where it comes from. They don't know what goes into it raising it. If they did, they might change their tune a little bit. But the closer you eat to this, to where it was raised on healthy soil, folks, you're going to have better health. Your body is a temple, and whatever you put in it, if it's junk, you're going to have junky health. If it's good, you're going to have good health, period. So is grass-fed beef expensive? Well, last time you went to the doctor, was it cheap? Nope, absolutely not. Do you enjoy taking all this medicine? Nope. Then stop it. Start eating healthy food and a lot of your health issues probably go, go away. 
Okay, I'm gonna get off that soapbox. Where did I get onto that one at? Oh, doesn't matter. I think it needed to be said. Uh, you might say I'm not very politically correct. I don't care. I'm gonna tell it the way it is, and I'll probably get some backlash on this video, but I don't care. I'm gonna tell the truth, and that is the truth. So, everyone, have a good one, and uh, we'll see you all down the road, and hit that subscribe button on the way out. And uh, everyone have a great weekend.